Welcome to the Global Learning Conference. I'm Dr. William Erickson, and I'll be discussing the role of upper extremity surgery in hypermobile patients and Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. I have no conflict of interest. I'm an orthopedic hand surgeon in the Seattle area, and my practice is skewed towards patients with painful conditions that don't show on tests, which describes why I see a lot of EDS patients. I have reasonable credentials to discuss these topics with 15 years of education and training and over 30 years in practice. I've been speaking at medical meetings about some of the aspects of these issues starting in 2004. There's a webinar available on the EDS website, chronicpainpartners.com. And my success in treating EDS patients got me invited to write this journal article which was published in 2017, and which you can find easily online or through my website. A more recent version of the webinar is available on YouTube. But let's face it, doctors know a fraction of what they need to know since we didn't get the PDF manual from God, and the human body is extremely complicated. This is an anatomically correct painting from the 1700s by a physiologist by the name of Paolo Mascagni. These are obviously very complicated systems. And EDS patients are even more complicated. Here's a patient with unsuccessful surgery by someone trained at the Mayo Clinic, which is probably the top orthopedic program in the country. The patient and the doctor might conclude that EDS patients shouldn't have surgery because you get a big ugly scar and the surgery doesn't work. But I diagnosed and treated my first EDS patient starting in 1990, and they didn't have any problem with the surgery that I did. And over time, I also came to recognize a complex pattern of upper extreme problems. And you can download this template from my website. These are patients that look fine, but their joints are loose and their muscles are tight. The general approach I advocate is to understand where the patient is in the arc of life and then use physical therapy to try and interrupt the cycle of hand and arm pain causing postural issues, and then try to fix anything painful distal to the elbow. So here's a typical patient presentation to my office, a healthy appearing person who spent the last couple of years with doctor appointments for vague intermittent pain and weakness. All the tests have been normal, x-rays, nerve tests, blood tests, MRI, therapy wasn't helpful. Double joint is, is actually pathologic and low blood pressure is likely POTS and irritable bowel syndrome is probably food allergies secondary to mast cell activation disorder. Somehow, I think my colleagues see a patient like this as an amorphous, uninteresting rock. But if they had my training and my curiosity, and if they just looked a little deeper, they might see this patient as I do with a complex, regular pattern of problems that are explainable and treatable. You just have to look inside. There's a nerve problem of the elbow that's thought to be rare, but is actually common. And it is a universal problem for ehlers danlos syndrome and hypermobile patients. It causes intermittent severe wrist pain and hand weakness. The adaptations to the weakness cause pain at the base of the thumb and in the lateral forearm. And once the hand or arm hurt enough for long enough, it becomes difficult to maintain normal posture, and then the nerves to the arm get pulled on, and the whole arm aches. One of my major contributions to understanding upper extremity problems in EDS patients is figuring out this nerve problem. There are no symptoms where the nerve is compressed, but rather where the nerve ends. It causes a peculiar profound weakness of the flexors of the thumb and index finger, and referred pain in the wrist bones. If you operate on this nerve at the elbow, the strength of these two muscles becomes normal immediately and permanently in the recovery room, even in EDS patients. 
So here's a patient demonstrating the weakness that all EDS patients have. And this is a half hour later in the recovery room with immediate return of strength. You can see the betadine and hear the EKG. Yeah, big difference. Please come down. This is a person being offered on for intermittent wrist pain and intermittent but persistent pain at the outside of the forearm, also as radial tunnel syndrome, lateral epicondylitis. You can't fake this weakness. And this is a problem for all EDS patients. Again, this is in the recovery room about a half hour later. Good. Let's do that one more time. Get the fingers taking up yep. the, whole, the whole screen. Pretty much. Good. And the thumb, pull your thumb down. This patient pinched, like you see on her left hand, on both sides pre up and pinched like her hand on the right side, immediately in the recovery room with no teaching or therapy, just normalizing the pinch mechanics. My current hypothesis is that EDS patients have a previously undescribed peripheral neuropathy related to the nerves being soft and they have to pass through tight muscles. Anterior interosseous nerve unfortunately ends with a large sensory nerve that innervates the wrist bones in the carpal tunnel. So people get aching pain in the wrist that gets described as tendonitis, but it's not. It's a uh, referred pain from nerve compression at the elbow. Patients are often told they, quote, don't have carpal tunnel syndrome, unquote, even though they have severe pain in the carpal tunnel. And sometimes they're just told it's tendonitis or that it's nothing, but this is what it is. How many people in the audience have been told specifically that they don't have carpal tunnel syndrome? Carpal tunnel syndrome, if diagnosed correctly, is straightforward to fix these days with the minimal scarring and downtime. Anyone in the audience have their carpal tunnel offered on without relief? The reason is likely because the compression is at the elbow and it can be fixed. The Weakness of the anterior interosseous nerve is painless and easily adapted to. The adaptations occur spontaneously without conscious effort and fall into four categories. Next muscle down, sideways on the index finger, sideways on the thumb, or by wrist extension. If you're not loose jointed, which is to say most men, the adaptations do not cause a problem. If you are loose jointed, each adaptation can cause a soft tissue failure. EDS patients have to adapt using all four ways and everything falls apart. The weakness in my observation is proportional to the joint laxity and the consequences of the adaptation depend on how discreetly the person adapts to it. I took a graphics course from Edward Tufte from Yale and came up with a slow chart, which you can download from my website regarding this pattern of problems. But the motor consequences involve the flexors of the thumb and index finger. And these problems tend to be painful. And these problems show on x-rays. Patients kind of dropping things. If they complain of weakness, their grip strength would be normal because you're measuring the ulnar nerve. And if you exercise the hand because of weakness and make the muscles larger, paradoxically, the hand gets weaker. The sensory component of the nerve goes to the wrist bones, unfortunately, to the carpal tunnel. And the hand aches with pronation, and we have become a pronated nation. Getting back to the patient in my office with a few more questions and a few x-rays, it becomes clear that her low blood pressure is actually POTS, and her headaches are actually from Chiari, and that her neck has a little bit of excess motion at each level, and there's just a lot of thoracic outlet symptoms related to posture and joint laxity. She eventually underwent surgery. So, and her left side is pre-op and right side post-op. 
very loose joints. And this is me dislocating her wrist with minimal pressure. And her thumb is not really attached here. And associated with this is weakness of her anterior and osseous nerve, which you can show like this, where she has no strength at all here, normal strength here, normal strength here, normal strength here. This is poorly thumb down like this is also very weak, but as hard as you can. And the people who adapt sometimes by doing this now pull down. Down. Those people get sore here also, which is a tendinosis of the extensor carpi radialis brevis. And she's had surgery on this side, and she's got skin pigmentation, so the scars tend to be a little bit more pigmented and take longer to quiet down. Um, but we've reattached her thumb here. It's completely stable. We've stabilized her thumb here by moving her extensor pollicis brevis here and realigning her extensor pollicis longus. And she had subluxation of the extensor tendons here, which were stabilized. And just the tendon procedure here also gave her this, like a stable MP joints. Completely different than her other side. And can you make the tendons snap around here? Yeah. You can see how these tendons are all off like that. The index finger tends to go radial and the others go either way and the EDQ somewhere over here. Anyway, that's a great example. So what was done with this patient was to assess where she was in the arc of life and to try and improve her posture with physical therapy using this template. The patient to the left has good posture with no tension or compression of the nerves coming out of the neck going to the arm. And the posture on the right demonstrates what happens to the nerves when you lean forward and drop your shoulder and your chin, which is what people do when they're sad or depressed or if their hand or arm hurts enough for a long enough period of time. We try not to offer in people with the posture on the right as they tend to have residual symptoms related to their posture. And if you only offer in people with good posture and stable shoulders, the success rate for these surgical procedures is extremely high. The anatomy of the proximated nerve involves the biceps tendon splitting like a Y and the pronator teres muscle splitting like a Y and then the median nerve splitting like a Y. And you can cut the bicepital aponeurosis without causing a problem. And you can cut the deep fascia of the uh, ulnar origin of the pronator without causing a problem. And that restores that nerve function immediately and permanently. Through the same incision, you can sneak across the arm and decompress the poster interosseous nerve and cut the fascia that's ripped underneath the wrist extensor treating you know, tennis elbow simultaneously through the same incision. This person had hand and wrist pain as well as tennis elbow. And this surgery that she had by someone else did not work. I redid her surgery using this incision and had it work. This is an unstable thumb. And this is an x-ray showing subluxation of the thumb, the CMC joint. And if it stays there, it will wear out prematurely. There is an operation developed in the 60s and published in 1973 to reattach the thumb to the hand that works well, even in EDS patients. If you don't do this, the subluxation causes cartilage loss, sclerosis, bone spurs, and eventually cysts which is largely preventable if you reattach the thumb and fix the anterior interosseous nerve. The pisiform is a small bone inside the flexor carpi ulnaris tendon, and it can move around and become painful. It's an accessory bone that can be removed through a small incision and hand function remains normal. Extensor tendon subluxation is common in ETS patients and these tendons can be stabilized if they're painful through small incisions. If the ligament the thumb tears chronically, it's difficult to repair that, and a more reliable operation would be a fusion, and there are several techniques for that. 
if there's instability between the radius and the ulna, that is also fixable. And there are at least two different techniques, either tightening the capsule or using a free tendon graft, uh, make it into ligaments. The indications for upper extremity surgery are very straightforward. The conditions need to be painful and not respond to other treatments. EDS patients usually have multiple diagnoses. So it would be rare to have just one problem. A surgical option has to exist for that problem, and the surgeon has to know about it. The patients also have to understand that their tissues are not as reliable as other patients and that the failure rate is definitely higher. It also helps have an anesthesia group that's outstanding, uh, which is one of the main reasons I operate at the hospital where I am in Seattle. And these patients uh, often have some residual complaints after that, but most of the disappointment comes from incomplete diagnosis or uh, not really understanding the patient's needs or expectations. Further complicating factors that make life hell for EDS patients are the following. Most doctors don't know anything about wrist instability. And the most common type is dynamic pseudodissociative. And most doctors don't know anything about the inter interosseous nerve, which is a big problem for every EDS patient. The common treatments that doctors use don't work reliably, and the healthcare system is failing in ways that have more of an impact on EDS patients, who as a group tend to be more complicated in ways that makes their subjective complaints of pain harder to interpret by the doctors. There are a number of operations that uh, can be successful in the right hands, but they're also very easy to screw up. So with uh, the thumb MP joint, the collateral ligament repair is unreliable. The treatments surgically for swan neck deformity have a high failure rate. Wrist stabilization works well if you know about how to do it or how to diagnose it. The quare vein surgery, uh, is usually a failure of diagnosis rather than the failure of treatment. People get their carpal tunnel operating at the wrist from the problems at the elbow. If you cut ligaments and lose jointed people, you can cause a problem at the same time you fix one. Anyway, if your pattern problems fits this template, you can use it to explain your symptoms to your family or doctors. And the problems from the elbow down are largely fixable with a knowledgeable Elder Stanley Savvy uh, hand surgeon. Thank you very much for your attention. I am sorry I'm not there in person, but hope to be available for a question and answer period.